I'm Brother Eddie Coleman with the Tornado Apostolic Church. Welcome to our morning devotion. Today, we're going to talk about spirit and truth. Uh, I'd like to read from John 4, 24. It says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we are going to look at the word spirit today. It's a force within a human being thought to give the body life, energy, and power. What are examples of spirit? Sense, the capacity to sense the world. Wonder, a sense of amazement at the world. Curiosity, the will to investigate, explore, and discover. Intellect, the capacity to understand and reason. And then there's emotion. And of course, emotion is the action that takes place. The Bible refers to spirit being a part of man that connects and communicates with God. Our spirit differs from our soul because our spirit is always pointed towards and exists exclusively for God. Whereas our soul can be self-centered. The joy, comfort, and peace of God's presence can only be experienced through our spirit. Your spirit is yours, but the spirit belongs to God. What is a spirit according to the Bible? What is the difference between soul and spirit? Your soul speaks of your inner life in relation to your own experiences, your mind, heart, will, and imagination. It also includes your thoughts, desires, passions, and dreams. But your spirit speaks of the same inner life in relation to God, your faith, hope, love, and character. What is the difference between the soul and spirit, the human spirit, Includes our intellect, emotions, fears, passions, and creativity. Human spirit is considered to be the mental functions of awareness, insight, understanding, judgment, and other reasoning powers. The purpose of the spirit is to strengthen us. Some believers mistakenly believe the main purpose of the indwelling spirit is to give us knowledge. The Spirit does give us knowledge. His two main gifts are knowledge and power. What is the soul made of? Is the Spirit separate from the soul? These are some questions we often ask. For instance, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, The human soul is not only real, but distinct from the body, and spirit. Now may God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Soul is real and separate from body and spirit. Do unbelievers have the spirit? The Bible says it is clear that the Holy Spirit does not indwell in the unbeliever, for the Spirit comes only to those who acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord. Romans 8 9 says, You are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. How is a person born of the Spirit? In other words, a person without God's Holy Spirit is purely flesh and has no spiritual eyes, ears, or heart to see, hear, and comprehend the message that God, Jesus Christ, came to bring. The Lord told Nicodemus, that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit 
is spirit. That's in John 3, 6. Acts 2, 38 tells us, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Romans 8, 4, That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Romans 8, 5, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Verse 6, it says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. In Romans 8 and 9, it says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So, to be a part of God's kingdom, we that worship him must worship him in spirit, because without the Spirit, we're not his. Lord, help us to understand the importance of receiving the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. What a difference it makes. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for such an opportunity to know who you are, to have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, Lord, dwelling within us. Oh, it will lead us and guide us, and it will teach us, and it will show us. We're so thankful, for Lord, for what you have done. And we want to give you all the praise and the glory. And we want to ask you, Lord, to continue to lead and guide us throughout this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we hope and trust that you'll have a wonderful day in Jesus Christ.